Hi all, welcome to my channel, welcome to my world, this is the world of rain. I absolutely love new build day and that's exactly what today is, new build day. We have got, from Agora Models, the Mercedes 196R Sterling Mosses Mercedes. Now I've already done a video regarding this uh, build and I've also done about the history of the vehicle and I'll put that video right here. It's also at the start of the playlist, so you can see all about that. Uh, but Agora Models have now uh, bought this to us. Uh, it's limited to 500 only, so if you haven't got yours, you might want to think about getting that now. And I have put a link down in the video description there. You can actually get this if you are interested in this car. Now pack one, you actually get packs one, two, three and four all in one go when you first start this build and then it comes monthly after that but pack one has got probably the most stuff i've ever seen on any part work build in it and you're going to see when i unbox that exactly what that looks like and something else that, that is got in there which i've never seen on any part work build so this is a first to me uh first for me agora models you're going to love this lou dalmay so i hope you're keeping note of this we have got all the screws right at the start of the build in a pillbox ready to go so check that out. <laughs> so we don't have to worry about getting screws for each individual stage. Everything we need is going to be in there. That is brilliant. I'd love all part works to have that. Perhaps with a little label saying what the part work is. So you never have to worry about screws. You'll have a whole tray of screws there and hopefully some spares as well. But that is absolutely brilliant. Now I'm not kidding to you when I tell you what's in this box is absolutely amazing. Some of the stuff we get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unbox it now. Then we're going to start working through this first four packs. Now, some of the stuff in these packs, even though we got them now, it will be a case that you have to keep them safe for a later time to actually come back to. And you'll see what I mean from that. Uh, but a lot of the smaller packs come in a box like this. This is the accelerator one to four here. So let's open this. And as you can see, absolutely loads of details of what we got coming in each pack. We've also got a screwdriver there, which is handy. Just looking at the ends, that looks like a PHO screwdriver. Lots of tiny details here. I'm not opening these up until I need them. And it does tell you exactly what pack number this actually refers to when we come through to the instructions. Some little details there with some pipe work. Look at them. And again, I can tell straight away this is metal because that's quite heavy. Some wheel rims looking like that. Now they do have an option when we put these wheels in. You've got the spokes that are ready made or the spokes you make for yourself, just like the Jaguar. So you don't have to worry too much about doing those ones. Again, some wheel rims here. Uh, looks like got some parts of the engine that we're gonna be creating there, there, and there. This is gonna be a long video working for all of this. And do you remember when I said about big parts? <laughs> Check that out, look at that. Absolutely crazy. This is what I was on about when I said that you have got some wheels already made. But if you want to have uh, the more realistic version, I guess, you have got the little spokes in there to make them yourself. You know what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to try and make them myself. And they have provided a uh, little uh, tweezers there for us. Uh, and also there's another screwdriver in this pack as well, looking like that. But this is ginormous. This all comes in that pack one to four. There is one other thing that comes in here, which I'm absolutely astonished by. As you can see, we've got pretty much the uh, front of the car here with these two pieces take this away and you're not going to believe this but in the first pack we've actually got the back of the car as well this is all metal so pretty much the whole frame of the car we've already got so in the first pack this is absolutely heavy and i will show this when it comes around to uh seeing that i don't I think we're going to be using that straight away i'll be surprised i haven't looked at the instructions yet but that's everything you get in the first pack. Now, also in the first pack, like Agora models, every other model they do, they do give a brochure which tells you about the build. And this also opens up into a brilliant poster there. So if you are collecting Agora models stuff, uh, you've probably got quite a few of these. And obviously by buying this, you also uh, enter yourself in the Agora Vantage Club, which is brilliant. But I'm gonna get cracking on this. So I'm gonna try and do this whole pack, packs one to four. If the video's getting too long, I may cut that short, but we'll have to see. You know, the only way you'll know is by the title on this YouTube video. But without further ado, let's get cracking. There you go. As you can see on the top camera, that's everything you get in stage one. I do love this uh, mesh effect 
over the light here. I think that's absolutely brilliant. But first thing I'm going to do is we're actually going to start putting that Mercedes emblem in here. Quite a uh, nice way to start this build. As you can see, we've got two holes. That's just going to match the lugs on the back of the uh, Mercedes emblem. And that's going into place just like that. It's going to be held in from the other side with an AP screw. So I haven't got my uh, cushioned mat down. I'm going to just hold it in my hands like that and get that into place. Now, turning this back over again, we've got this little uh, partition here that we're going to be putting into place. That's just going to go into the inside of this section. And it's held over those two points just there and they're held in with CM screws. Now, this build can get a little bit confusing because there are two different color screws for CM. It's the black CM screws that we want, but they are all in the uh, same pack here. Now, we are going into metal. I normally put oil on my screws when I'm going into metal, but uh, these ones don't need that at the moment. Trust me, as soon as they do, I will let you know. And there we go, that's the last one in place. We can put this whole thing just to one side for a second, because now I'm going to be putting the grill over the reflector here, which looks like this. This is what the grill looks like, and that's just going to go on top, that way round, so it fits in like that. Now I do want to hold this in, so I turn this over. It does hold itself in, as you can see there. We're going to mount this now. So again, turning the car over and you can see that lovely mesh I was on about before. This is just going to be going this way around into that. It sort of slips in itself there. Uh, that's held in once again with CM screws. I do think this time I will just put a tiny bit of oil on here. I don't know why. It just makes my life easier. It does go in a lot more smooth. And there we go, that's in. And then that looks just like that. You can't really see it because of the mesh there, but trust me, it's in there. <laughs> and that is all there is to do in that stage. We're gonna keep the steering wheel safe for now. Now the next stage comes in its own bag here, which is labeled 1-2. Let's get this open. And this is the air intake and dials that we're doing now. So I'm going to take this frame here. This is metal and I'm going to put this mesh over the top, lining up all the holes, as you can see, just like that. I'm going to be holding all of that into place with AM screws. Now, these are actually really tiny screws, but they will fit on a PH zero screwdriver. So I'm going to get these in. Put one in first. Not too tight, as soon as it's hand tight, stop. You don't want to split that mesh underneath. I'm going to do that one, two, three, four, five, six screws to put in. And there you go. When they're in, you do get that nice bend effect on there. That looks great. Okay, we're going to put a bracket in now. And we've got two of these brackets to put in. So one's going to fit on this side here, just kind of like that. The other one's going to fit on this side here so that the screw holes are pointing out, but the actual hooks are pointing in. They're going to be held in with BM screws and they'll go in just like that. I'll put the other one in now, and there you go. They're both in like that. Now I've got this little bracket to put in. Uh, probably best if I pick this up with my tweezers so you can see how that looks. That's just gonna go into the point just here on the interior of the car. Hopefully you can just about see that. It's gonna be held in once again with a BM screw. I've still got them out from uh, the last thing we just screwed in there. So let's get that in place. Then we can take the grill that we had, put this into here so that the brackets in there will fit nicely into the channel like you can see there. Now when we're installing this, you can have that flat just to make things easier for you to get that nice and secure in there like that. Now I've got some brackets to put over the top of these that's gonna be held in with CM screws. And this is what those brackets look like. Make sure when you put these brackets in, you put them in with the bigger space towards the front of the vehicle here. I've already done one side, I'm just putting the uh, other side in there. And now they are hinged into place like that. Bit of a fiddly section now, I've got a spring to put in, looking like that. Closing up the front grill, I'm going to be putting one side of the spring through this bracket here and the other side of the spring through the bracket that we put in right at the start. So let me get this in. There you go, the spring's in place. So now when I open this, this is gonna be spring loaded, as you can see. Perfect. Put that to one side, because we're gonna start doing some of the dashboard now. This 
is looking like that. I've got a couple of details to add to this. In the larger holes here, I've got two black cone type details, which are shaped so they can only go in certain ways. So one's gonna go in just like that there. And I've got another one going at the bottom, but that one's just a push in. Oh, that fallen out again. So I'm guessing I'm gonna have to attach this from the other side. And I am gonna be putting it in with an AP screw. So got that here, let's just get that in. Perfect, so that looks just like that. And I'm gonna put the rest of these dials in. So I've got this one that looks like that, that's going into the center. Make sure we've got this round the right way. So that's gonna go in like that. And I've got two smaller dials going into each side here. This center one does come with a little bit of glass to put in. So check that hasn't fallen out. So there we go, just pushing these all the way in. And that now looks just like that. And that's all there is to do in that stage. Check out stage three here. Now stage three is everything we need to start the engine block and to also do the steering column. So let's do that now. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is need the engine block and we also need this part here. Now these are all metal. This is just gonna fit flush into that piece there and it's gonna be held in with DM screws. Just need two of these, just from this side. And it should be nice and flush around there. Okay, we've got the oil filter to put in now. That's just gonna be going into the little cavity slot that we've got on there with the nozzle facing up and then we can close both of these together. So this will be going on top just like this. And again, everything is nice and flush there. Now to keep that in place, once again on this side, we've got two DM screws to put in. Now on top of the pit that we just put in first, I do have a bracket to put on. Now this looks just like that. So I can put that over the top there. And then on top of that, I've got parts of the oil pan here. That looks just like this, and it's gonna go this way round with the hole facing the hole that we've just got into that bracket there. Push that in and make sure it clips in. It actually holds itself, but it does want an EM screw in there. And that will hold that into place. We're actually finished with this piece now, so we can put that to one side because we're gonna be working on the steering. Bring the steering wheel over from part one Okay, with the steering, we're gonna need a steering wheel like that. The first thing I'm gonna put just over the top here is this little thing here. I don't know what this is. <laughs> That's just gonna fit on just like that there. On the other side of this, I've already laid this out and got the screws in. I've got a bracket to put in with some FN screws. That's just gonna go into the holes that we can see there. So I'll line that up. And I'm gonna secure this in with these FM screws. We're then going to be taking this bracket and putting this plastic bezel around it. It actually just clips in, so it looks like that. And then I take this steering rod shaft and that's just going to go through the ends there. And then quite simply, we're just going to be putting the steering wheel we've just created on the end of this. So the holes line up there and securing that in with BM screws from each side. So I hold that in place. I think I'll put a bit of oil on this. and get these BM screws in. So I now need this steering rod and this bush, and I'm just gonna push the bush on here like that. The other end of this is actually gonna be going into the steering rod here, just like that, and it's gonna be held in with a GM screw. Very long screw, this one. So again, I am gonna put this into some oil. Make sure this goes all the way through. On the other end of this, we have this extra part of the steering column in the same way, that's just gonna go in there just like that. And that, once again, is held in with a GM screw. Once again, I get all that all the way through here. And that is the steering rod and the steering wheel completed. Let's go to stage four. Again, in its own separate packet here, stage four is the engine blocks and gearbox, engine blocks, <laughs> the engine block 
and gearbox. And the first section we need, all of this is metal by the way, is just this section here and we're going to put this detail just on top. Now this detail is going to be going into this section just here and it's held in underneath with AP screws. Make sure you line them up. Hard to see when the uh, detail is actually covering the whole of the <laughs> holes. <laughs> there we go. So that detail's in. Got another detail just to put on the end of that one that looks like that. And again, we've got two little holes on there, which are going to go in there. Once again, held in with AP screws, just from the underside here. So get them screwed in. Perfect. Now on top of that, I've got this little hole. You can probably see, get me tweezers out because I've got this tiny detail here to put in. Which is the oil pressure valve. I'm going to push that into the top here. Excellent. Taking the engine on its side now, I've got this detail to put in, making sure that these points are away. We're going to actually just slot that in like that till it goes in all the way. And then once that's in, I'm going to be taking this section and putting that over the top. And then that's going to be held in with some DM screws. So on two of these. So get these in. These ones I tend to like to use my bigger screwdriver screws them down a lot tighter all we're going to do then is take what we created at the start of this and this is just going to be going onto the top like that once again held in with dm screws just in these points and there you go get that last one in and that is all there is to do in that stage So in stage five, they gave us another screwdriver here. I think that might be for the smaller screws, but there is a hell of a lot of little tiny details in here. As you can see, they're the two different kinds of heads on these screwdrivers. So this is the fuel pump body. Now everything you've seen me working on at the moment is all metal, which is uh, amazing. I do love that. Uh, we are going to be putting the uh, little injectors just into the top here. So I'm going to get these out. And it's just a case of pushing them into the holes. Now I have got some pliers here. This is what I got from uh, Oligo Models. And you can just push them down really hard to make sure they're not going to come out. I've got this other detail now to put in, which is the um, fuel pump, part of the fuel pump here. That's going to be going into this end just here. Now it has got a little keyhole pattern, so it's going to match the same keyhole pattern as that one there. Again, it's just a push in and I make sure it goes in all the way like that. Got another little detail now here, which is going to be going into those holes at the bottom. It can only go in one way because we've got a larger hole and a smaller hole. Get that lined up and pushed in. And now we can start actually putting the pipe work into place now. So from this side here, I'm going to be putting this part of the pipe in this end. And the other part of the pipe is just going to go into this hole in the side of the fuel pump here. So I'll get this in, show you what this looks like. Now they do go in quite tightly, so you shouldn't need to glue that. So that's that one in. We've got another pipe to put in, and that's going into the hole just at the top here. So I'll get that pushed in there, like that. So that's coming down the bottom. Got another pipe to go into the hole next to it and this has got a sort of hole on that side which is going to go on top of that pipe there so i'll get this one in and show you what this looks like so that's in there it joins the bottom to the top in the hole that we got over the top i do have this gold pipe now which is just going to go into the hole here and then just on top of the fuel pump at the start we have got a little nipple to put on very tiny piece this one is so uh, i don't want to lose this so i'm going to uh just put a tiny bit of glue just on this point here so that this nipple is not going to fall off. When I put it on, you'll see how tiny this actually is. So that's pretty much the fuel pump finished. We're now going to attach this to what we've been working on previously. Now this is actually just going to go into these two holes on this point here. So it's going to go in this way, just like that. And it's going to be held in with DM screws. 
very hard to get a uh, screwdriver in there that's for sure but uh, I will persevere with a thinner one I think and see how we get on with that and that is all there is to do in that stage so stage six we're going to be doing the starter motor check that out I love all these tiny parts here and they're all colored all ready to go for us Brilliant. Okay, so we're going to be taking the uh, starter motor side here, the part, and I'm going to be putting a bracket at the end of it, which is the PTO shaft, they're calling this. This is just going to be going into the hole on this side, just there, with an AP screw. Now we're going to be taking the other side of this, and this is just going to rest on the top, just like that. Once again, I'm going to put an AP screw in the hole just on this side here. And basically, we've now joined both of those parts together like that. We just have to put the other sides of these on now. So it's this section that I want first, and that's just going to be pushed into these bits just here. Push that on, and that closes up that side. And we're going to do exactly the same on the one on this side here. But before we put that in, I'm going to bring over the engine block again. And this is just going to go over the point just there. But we need to make sure this shaft is in the hole there. So it sort of fits on just like that. It's held in with an EM screw. Probably best on the top camera to see this. But there we go, that's sitting in like that and the shaft is now going inside there. Now we can put the top on this to hide that screw hole and push that down. So now that looks like that. And then concentrating on these sides here, we have got some brackets to put on. And they're just going to go into the two holes that we've got each side. So there you go. That's them in position. And then we've got these tiny little pegs here, which are going to hold it in from this side here. So just line them up, get the peg in there and push that in. Do the same on the other side. So there's both of those pegs in. And then we've just got this bracket then to put over, which is going to go onto the center bits here. It's just over the top of these. There's two holes to put these in. So one two and then there's a little lug which is just going to go into the side of this starter here like that make sure these are all seated properly um, that's perfect and there we go that's what that looks like and that's all there is to do in that stage in stage seven we're going to start constructing the cylinder heads here and the first thing I'm going to do is going to be taking these two sections together and I'm going to be putting these into the slot so it fits nice and flush in there like that we are going to secure that down with two AP screws just into the inside here so that's two AP screws in place I'm going to be doing exactly the same on the other side so this one's going to go in this side here like that and again held in with AP screws again you don't want to get the fuel injectors mixed up with the smart plugs. <laughs> the fuel injectors look different. So I'm just putting these in. I think I am going to... I tend to use these because it stops the part breaking when you put it in. Because they do go in quite tight, you see. There we go. That's the spark plugs in place. And now I'm going to be putting the injectors in place. They're going into the points just at the top there. And there we go. There's all the injectors in place. So all we're going to do then is take this metal base here. We're going to be putting these together like this. And it's going to be screwed in with two screws here. These are HM screws. So that's now looking like that. Bringing over the engine again. This is just going to be fitting into this section. Oh, get it the right way around. This way round, With this end pointing out here. They're going to be held in by these two points with DM screws. Now with this whole engine you're going to have to take my word for the fact that all of these screws are being put in oil because they can be a little bit tight to get in and I sometimes I'm having as you saw to use my bigger screwdriver to make sure that's in nice and tight and that really coming along isn't it is all there is to do in that stage in stage eight we're going to start constructing the cylinder heads here those pieces out and this is very very similar 
to what we've just done. <laughs> so let's get these into position. First one we put in this side here. Once again at the bottom, we're going to secure that in with AP screws. Then the one on this side. And again, AP screws just at the bottom there. Put the spark plugs in here, like that. And then I'm just going to be putting the injectors in the top. So that's all the injectors in. And then just like last time, we're going to be putting the base in here, which is just going to go in that way. Once again, held in with HM screws. And then this time, this one's going to be going next to the one that we placed before, just into the engine there, onto those points held in with DM screws. Now, once that's in, we can actually just take the pipe that was coming from the fuel pump here, which isn't really going anywhere at the moment, as you can see. There's a little hole to put it in, just there. And that, once that's in, is all there is to do in that stage. In stage nine, we're gonna be fitting the valve covers here. These are metal, I can tell that because this is a really heavy pack. <laughs> so bringing over the engine again, we're gonna be taking these little things here, which is the base of the covers, I'm gonna put them on each side. So this one's got one A, I'm gonna make sure that's upside down to me when I put that in. This one says two A, and I wanna make sure this is the right way round for me when I put that one in. So it's gonna go in like that. These are held in with BP screws. So to each side, I'll get all of these in. Now on one of these cylinder head tops, the metal tops, we have got a little Mercedes Benz plate to put on with the uh, engine details and stuff like that, I'm guessing. VIN and chassis numbers, that's just gonna go on there like that. Held in with some IM screws. These are really tiny screws, these ones. So I am using my really tiny <laughs> screwdriver here to get these in. They are going into metal again, so I am, even though they're tiny, putting them in oil. Now they don't actually want these on top yet. So uh, it's gonna leave them for a minute to one side and we're gonna move in on to stage nine, uh, 10, sorry. So in stage 10, we're gonna be wiring the engine. We've got lots of tubes in here, so we've got some fiddly stuff to do now. So what I wanna do first is I wanna bring over these two cylinder tops that we had before. We want them round this way, just like that, because I'm gonna be putting this plastic piece in between them. One's gonna go in this side, one's gonna go that side there. They're held in from the underside with AP screws. So I'll get that side in first and then do the same on the other side. Now we're at the point that I can actually put this onto the engine. So this is gonna go over the top of these cylinder heads here, and I'm gonna push this center part onto these lugs that I've got here as well. And there you go, that's all in, and it's all clipped in as well. Now, on this side here, we've got these pipes to put in. We wanna put them so that the nipples are facing down, and they're gonna be going into that position just there with the larger section towards the middle. So on this one, it's gonna be this way around here. They're secured in with EM screws. So I'm gonna get those in there. And as you can see, they're all in there. If I turn this over, this is what that's looking like. So we're about to start putting some pipes between these two points here. And this is basically simply a case of grabbing one of these pipes here, putting one end in the injector on this side, and then putting the other end into the injector on the other side. Now you may want to, just to tidy these up, cut these down just slightly so there's not too much of a bend in each wire. Now I'm going to go around and do the whole lot here. That's going to take some time, but I'll show you what it looks like when we come back. Now I like having the straight sort of effect. You could have it so that the uh, cables are looking a little bit more um, bent, if you like, underneath. But I put all of these in this end here so that I can actually just give it a haircut like you see here and ensure all of these cables are the same length before they go into the injectors on the other side. And there you go, they're all in. I think that looks lovely and neat. Excellent, and that's all there is to do in that stage. <laughs> 
So in stage 11, we've got the valve covers now for the other side. Let's get these out. And just like last time, this one says 1B, so I'm going to have that here. Get that in. And the other one here says 2B. And I'm going to have that the other way around here. Again, BP screws to secure these in. And then exactly the same as last time, I'm going to be putting these uh, brackets to join these parts together. So one in that side and one in that side there. Once again, held in from the underside here, just with some uh, AP screws. And then just like last time, we want this side here facing the open end, which is going to be putting this over the top here and clipping it into place. Okay, I've laid out all the parts now to do the rims. Uh, now, remember, I said that there's two ways to do this. You've got the easy way, where these spokes are already created for you, and you've got the hard way, where you're gonna do them yourself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate both. So I'm not gonna need these spokes. I'm gonna create the easy way first. So if you're gonna go with the easy way first, you need these two little bits that are gonna go together. We're actually gonna be putting these onto this section here and they're going to clip in just like that now they are going to be screwed in with some lp screws and as you can see in the lp screw bag there are silver ones and black ones we want some silver ones these are quite tiny so i'm going to use my really tiny screwdriver here to get this in and as i said it takes four of these screws okay so when we've got that Looking like this, we've got a larger end and a smaller end. It's the smaller end I'm interested in, and I'm interested in these spokes which have already been done with the smaller hole in the middle. That's just gonna go over these lugs here. So when I push this in, it's gotta be facing down like this. Let's get this lined up so they're all in. It means that I've got three holes there vacant to put some screws. So I'm gonna screw them in with some TP screws. There we go, that's the third one going in there so now that's looking like that I'm then going to turn it over and on this side here I'm going to be putting these spokes and again these are just going to be going uh, this way around with the lugs going into these sections here let's get them in exactly like you saw last time so now that looks just like that this time they're held in with UP screws and just like last time, there's three of these to go in. So get these ones in. Perfect. So that looks just like that. Now we're going to have it this way around because we're going to start putting this into the rim. Now there's two very similar rims here, but we want the one that hasn't got, it's quite flat around the outside compared to that one there. So it's this one that we want. And I'm just going to push the spokes in here, making sure every single one is engaged in the holes next to it, which it is looks like that okay continuing with easy mode we've got the pack here 13b there is another pack called 13a 13b that we want let's get this open and i'm interested in this ring here first that comes out of that pack and i've got a tiny valve here that i've got to put into that now you will see on this side there's a little tiny hole just there so let's get this in fits in quite tight there hopefully you can see that just there I then want 13A, which looks just like this. Very similar to this one. It's a lot thinner though. This one's quite thick here. So this one I want. Turn it over. And I'm going to be dropping this into here. So I'm lining up all the screw holes. Just like that. Now this is going to be held in with three CM screws. This time these screws are black, even though there's silver CM screws in here. Now it's the larger holes here that these are going to go into so I've got one there one here and then just one around the other side I'm then going to take what we created earlier making sure we've got it this way around and that's just going to slot over the top of all the other parts here it does go in a specific way so it's going to go in just like that that's going to be held in with AP screws, and this time again, black screws. They just secure to the lower slots here. And there's four of these screws in total. 
So there you go, that's looking like that from that side and that from that side. Got 13B that's going to go over the top of this section now. So just lining that up so that the notch there is in, that's how you know you've got it in the right way. And then from the underside here, we're going to be securing that in with CM screws. Now again, even though we've got silver CM screws, they want these ones to be the black ones that are going in here. So I'm going to get them in nice and tight. Now one other thing to do, I've just taken the screws off that centerpiece there because I forgot to put this uh, cover on. And it just goes on top of this section here just to tidy up how that looks. Get that one in. We actually do exactly the same on the other side. I've got a cover to put in here. Can't believe that I uh, forgot about that. <laughs> But this is the World of Wayne channel. I do make mistakes, so you don't have to. Let's just uh, get these out. And then I can line this up over the top here and get this in. And there you go, typical me, forgot to put the fascias on. So I can just put this back together again and secure this with CM screws. just around the side again. So as you can see, that's now done on easy mode. We've got one finished wheel there. Now, if you're brave, you can actually do this on hard mode. And that's what I'm about to do now. So for hard mode, just like last time, this time though, we're gonna start off by putting the valve. Let's get that out here into the hole there. I am just gonna, I don't want this falling out, so I'm gonna drop a little bit of glue in there. And there you go, that's the valve in there. Okay, things are gonna get a bit difficult now. <laughs> so what we need, first off, is this section just here. This is 12A, and I also need this caddy here, which is gonna help line up the spokes I put them in. Now there is a locating lug for that just at the top. So when I put this in, I'm gonna match that with the lug just there. Get that into position, there you go. And that's now all lined up there. Now we've got these tiny sticky pads here, which they want me to put in so that it re-indents all the way around this section here. Now I am finding these incredibly difficult to get off there. So I'm gonna try and do it without it. I managed to do the Jaguar without it, so I can't think why I can't do this without it, but we'll see how that goes. We've got, this guide rail here, which is going to go into the middle. And again, it's got a lining up lug to make sure this is in properly. So I'm just lining everything up. Perfect. And now none of these can turn. You've got a little bit of uh, leeway there. Other than that, we're pretty solid in space. Now we want to take spokes 12F first. 12F are the large or the longest uh, spokes. These are short. 12 up along. Now it's hard to see this, but one end's got a blank on the end and the other one's got nothing. So it's the blank end, which is going in last. We're gonna be putting this into the first level of holes. And that's the ones lowest to the bottom of this thing here. So we'll get that in. And it's gonna sort of go to the left of where we are. It looks like it's actually going, I don't know if you can see this on the top camera. If that's the hole there, this is the hole in front of it. I'm going to left of that hole. So it's got that angle on. I'm going to do that all the way around. Now hopefully you can see that. Don't really want to move it too much because these aren't stuck in at all. But that's the first row of spokes on. Now, exactly the same spokes we've been using. We're now going to be put them on the third level of rows. So we've got uh, a bottom level, which we've already filled up. There's a second level, which we're missing. There's a third level. There's actually a fourth level on here as well. It's the third level that we're going to start putting these into. Now, when I put these ones in, they're going to be crossing over the ones we just put in. So I'll put a couple in, show you what this looks like. And then as you can see, it's crossing over there of the one underneath. And I'm going to continue going around doing exactly the same thing. Just put one more in. We 
remember it's the third level of holes and there are four level of holes in there there we go that's the next lot in and then i'm going to continue doing that all the way around about halfway through this really just take your time on this i've got this on a stable surface so i'm not knocking it the only way these things are going to be knocked off is if i do it with my hands and there we go i can't move this very much because uh <laughs> they're all going to fall out but that's all in place there now we're going to be putting section 12b on and we want it this way round so that the flat side is going to be going over what we've just created and basically you see we've got these three holes here that middle hole is going to go into that point just there so making sure all of these are still lined up i'm going to drop this into position just like that perfect now I'm going to hold that in with three cm screws so I'm pushing down with my fingers while I put these in so I don't want that moving and there we go that's perfect all of those are in place like that I now need the smaller spokes which are labeled e and these are going to go into the second level of holes now so I count up from the bottom we haven't got to worry about the first ones moving now and they're going to sit on top of each one of these pillars here so i'm going to go around once again it's sort of like two to the left of where they are so i'm going to put this row in all the way so i've done all of those that's the second row of holes upwards put them in all the way that way now we're going to be on the fourth row and we're going to be crossing these over as well so again, I'm going to put one of these in here. Try not to get blinded by spokes. We're only interested in the layer below it. And I want to ensure that these cross over that layer below it. Just like that. Hopefully you can see that. I'll do one more. And there you go. So as you see, they're starting to cross over on the top now. I'll continue that all the way around. And there you go, that's all of those spokes in place. Uh, what I am going to do now is I'm going to be clamping this together so we can shut this all up. Now to do this, I'm going to be putting this on top. Now you will notice this has got a little bit of a notch in there. That's going into the space of the notch that we've got down here. So I'm going to line this up and drop this in just like that. Make sure nothing's moved. I think we're good. Checking every single spoke. We're good. So I'm going to secure that now down with AP screws. Once again, not worried about putting some force on that now. With my fingers while I screw this down. Number four over here. So all of those spokes are now in place. So now I can go like that and show you what that's looking like. Perfect. Now we know that won't come out. So what I can do now is take this out of the jig that it's in. So let me just uh, get this out. Don't want to put too much pressure on it. There we go. And that's what that's looking like at the moment. Now, once again, they want me to put some little uh, uh, sticky bits in here, which I'm not going to do. I'm going to actually do my own thing and hopefully I can get this to uh, stay in place. We'll have to see if that's going to work. Now, I am going to have to use some of this tape now. I'm not using it on the other side. I'm using it on this side here. I'm going to put this on the edge of this spindle just here. I'm also going to put it on the other side as well because I don't want this moving. So that tapes on, which means I can now put this cylinder just over the top. And that's going to go in position without falling out, as you can see. Now in this pack, we have some more pins to put in. What I'm going to do is put them in the bottom row here. And then they're going to go through the little sort of heptagon that we've got just to the right of where we've put that in and come out the other side. So if I get this through, I'm trying to show you, I think that's okay. So I've put it in here. They're coming out the little heptagon we've got just there. So it's coming through the other side. 
Now what's going to happen eventually, if I put this into position, this is why they wanted me to stick this in, and I've just laid that into position just here. Now I'm having to think, because it's going to be hard to do if I don't put a drop of glue just in there to keep that into place, because as soon as I turn it over, it's going to fall straight back out again. I don't really want that to happen, so I am going to put just a tiny bit of glue in there. Now the glue I'm going to use is this stuff which is like a, uh, let me just gently put that down, which is a liquid glue, which will run into that. And it doesn't need a lot of this. So I've got a little dabber here, just to ensure I push this into position. And that's the first one in position. It's so hard to show you, but uh, let me just point to it. Hang on a second, I've got to find it myself. It's just in there. And now I'm going to continue doing that all the way around and obviously it's each in the, it's each opposite one again. So the next one, we're going to be skipping one and going to the next one. Yes, so as you can see, they're all in nice and secured. I've got one more row left to put in. They're going to be on this side here into the top row again, going into the opposite direction. So they're crossing over each other again. Well, that took some doing, but as you can see, they're all in place there now. It's taken about two hours. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to be closing that off. So I need the outer section of the rim here and I need this section here, which is labeled as 13B and that's going to go inside this section. Uh, it can only go in one way, but we want to make sure that the teeth are facing upwards because that's what's actually going to clamp everything down there. And then once we've got that, we're going to be pinning this together on top of this section just here. Now I need to make sure it's in the right way. We do have a little notch on this side that we need to match to the gap in that side there. So I'm going to get this in. Just like that. And where that notch was, I'm actually going to put a CM screw just in that position there. So if I hold these up against each other, the one on the right here is uh, the one that I've uh, taken two hours to do. The one on the left took about 10 minutes. So you can see the difference. Now, obviously it's your own personal preference, which one you're gonna go with, but uh, there you go. They do give you the option, should you do struggle with that sort of one. But there you go. And there you go. When that's done, that looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Now, the rest of this pack, it's full of really big parts and we're talking the ones I showed you at the start, the main body uh, and I've also got in this pack, which is now empty apart from this section here, we've got some more bodywork. but we don't actually do anything with that in this stage. We do need to keep this safe, but long video, loads to do, uh, especially now I'm happy that we can uh, actually do these wheels okay. I'm pretty happy with that, I have to say. This whole pack took a day. Now remember, this is uh, you get the first four packs together. It took a whole day to do, although it's actually taken two days to film. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this extra long video today. And I really do hope like, you like what you're seeing here with the Mercedes, uh, Sterling Moss Mercedes there. But if you like that video, please remember to give me a thumbs up. Other than that, take care.